Hello again, uh, new patches here. Um, there was a small delay, I was on holidays, but I'm finally back in the office and ready to share more stuff with Optic. Yeah, so the new patches out. In this video, I'll show you the new features and I'll also show you like a case if you want to do like these neural renderings of your Blender uh, screenshots, for example. Just so you guys get some sense of how you would go about it, uh, since some of you asked about it. So in this video, I'll show you how that works. So we are here in the UI. Um, some smaller stuff first that we fixed. The lens training is much more sturdy now. A lot of the code that was to handle the image processing and so on should be much more robust now. And there should be way less like error cases. But if you guys get any sort of errors or like if you're stuck in like training or whatever, just let us know the Discord and I'll get to you as soon as possible to, to fix them. Then also now you can have three lenses. So before you could only have one, but we keep uh, upgrading it. So now you have kind of three. So now you can combine stuff where if you have a style that you want to combine with uh, object or something like this, you can do two different lenses and use them simultaneously. So this will just allow much more interesting use cases with lenses because you can kind of blend them together, uh, which just gives you even more customization. Ultimately, we want to be able to give you more freedom with lenses, but already with adding the ability to have three helps a lot with that. Um, and then lenses are also part of presets now. So if you save a preset, it will check uh, the lenses and it will save them. And then if you load and if you still have the lens existing, it will load the influence value that you had in your presets. So you can really nail down specific style or something with the combination of lenses in the preset. There's a new model. Um, so if you go to preference, you see model version 0 0.5. Now you can always go back to the previous ones if you want. It's just a better balance of like, if you have realistic stuff, it will want to do realistic stuff. If you have sketchy style, it will start want to stay sketchy. Whereas the first one is very sketchy. The previous one is very more realistic. I think the new one can split them better without, uh, without bringing the bias from one category to another. So you'll see kind of the outputs here also, so you get a sense. Then, I mean, next up I'll explain, let us open the image. So I have this old sketch that I did um, quite a while ago. Still has those sketch lines and stuff, so it's a good example to use here. Uh, the first thing you see is that there's no normal and 2x anymore on the model size. So all the images you generate will always be the same size, so you don't have to adjust between normal and 2x. It's just basically we found settings that you can get high quality stuff with reasonable speed. Um, so there's no reason to switch between them. So now it's just, yeah, you hop in, you already have the size. You get a nice high resolution image without having to wait too long. So it's just overall better user experience. And yeah, you still get the 4K exports when you just refine the image. So it's just overall, um, yeah, overall a better system. Um, so size you don't have to define anymore. Uh, model influence, uh, it's the same, but if, now if you go to one, so f uh, now it says full when you go to one, now you have a mode that basically removes all the context of the original image. Whereas before it struggles sometimes if you have a very wide image, let's say a wide background, that it would really have a hard time go getting away from that wide background, even though you have full model influence. But now there's basically a separate mode when you go to full. We actually completely remove the context of the original image, so it can only see the shapes if you have shape control on, and there, there's no relation to the white anymore. So now if you pump it up all the way to one, it will do completely new stuff, just depending on your inspiration, depending on your lessons and shape control. But the original image won't have any influence now if you go all the way to full. And I can show you the just the difference here. So first I do like show once eight five. So there is still the context from the original image. I obviously also want the shapes. So let's do 0 0.8 uh, shape different as smart, which I will get to this next also, but for now I'll just use the smart. And bam, you can see that yeah, we generated on the image and basically everything changed, but you can see it still retained the context of the original image. So the background was white and white didn't change at all. 
you have the shadow, uh, the shading get more realistic, more like nicer reflections and so on, and you don't have those individual sketch lines. And now I'll show you the difference if I go the full. Uh, we should then get away from the completely white image. We, st we will probably still have a shadow because that's contextually you don't have the shape here, so you will have some sort of like feature there. But now it should be completely free to do other stuff. So as, yeah, as you can see now that we actually generate some sort of environment, uh, it looks like we're a bit too high on the shape control. So I will have, let it have a bit of freedom to do whatever it wants. So I'll go back, let's go to like 0 0.7 and try again. Okay, here we go. There's some funky redness in there. Um, and that's also one thing to consider since we have less context uh, in the generations. It has also more things to mess up with you, what you intend. So yeah, with full, the results can be much more unexpected since there's less context, but it's just sometimes you just want to go quite far away from the original image. The full just allows it with more freedom, but with freedom comes also more unpredictable results. So the next thing I already kind of clicked on it is in shape control, the two the two options used to be general and detailed. And uh, the reason why we deleted those, like the difference between is that whether you use general or detailed, you could get the same result as general if you want to detail and just reduce the shape control. Basically, yeah, try to be more like general and have freedom in smaller details. So the differentiation didn't make that much sense. So instead, uh, smart is what used to be before. So both general and detailed are in the smart mode, uh, where it just tries to read the lines and remove, like if you have a lot of sketch lines, it doesn't read each individual sketch line, but just like the general details of the sketch. And that's smart. So whether you want to use general details, just use smart and then play around with the shape control to have the right amount of detail or like precision of following uh, the original sketch. Then the new one is literal, like the name suggests. The shape control is literal, so if you have a sketch, it will read every sketch line you did. So it's not really helpful in sketches. What it is helpful in is uh, CAD data or Blender data. They have a screenshot and it has a lot of detail and you don't want the model to assume any of the lines shouldn't exist, but you want to take the input shapes literally. So then you would use literal and I will show that next. But since we were using sketch in this case, I use smart because I don't want each sketch line to be followed exactly. The next thing actually is since we already have context awareness of the model, so the model can read what's in the image. We can also do automatic prompts. Uh, so zero, I'll look at this code in like 0 0.85. So we have some of the context for the original image. And now if you look here at the bottom, we have the box where you can describe what you want. But you also can change the input mode with this button next to the generate button. And if I click on it, you actually see these bubbles that have what looks like a prompt. You have a term for each. Uh, prompt uh, and now with this manual mode you can really be specific about either the influence of an individual word or add new words and so on again it's not necessary so so far I've just pressed generate I don't prompt anything because there hasn't been any need but if you for example really want to manually prompt now it's possible with this uh, text input uh, mode to change it to be the manual so if I want to add a word here, let's say I want it to be red paint. Um, yeah, now I can add the prompt there. And now if I run it again, I'll generate. Yeah, as we can see now, the paint is red. We added the prompt. So now it's way easier to just manually control the prompt if you want. Also, if you want to remove, you can just do that. Um, if you want to increase the influence of an individual prompt, you can just as you can see, when I hover over it, you have this uh, like scroll thing. If you press and hold and go up and down, you can see that it increases or decreases each term influence. So if I go to zero, it maxes at 1.5 and usually 1.5 is already like 
excessive. Uh, so you will get some wild stuff if you really pump this stuff to 1.5. So you have to be careful. And again, most of the time, just having it in basic 1.0 is good enough. So you can just add those words. But if you know what you're doing with the influences, you can still change them with just pressing and holding. Yeah, I'll just generate one more time just to see the the effect. Bam, and uh, yeah, if I, then I'll just refine this just so we have like a big image of one of the generations. Uh, yeah, I'll download this here and then let's just zoom in just to look at its closure. So yeah, you can really quickly with like, for example, the old sketch, you can go to like a high, kind of more refined uh, sketch quite quickly. So yeah, those are like the major features of the update. Um, and since we added a few of those things, it then allows us to do kind of this neural rendering th uh, that I did the Instagram post about. And I'll just show you how they were done so you get a sense of uh, how you can do it yourself if you want to use a Blender screenshot to render or something. Uh, so I'll just close this. I will find the image that I want to use. So I have this screenshot that I that's the one I used on the Instagram post. For the results that you saw, I used a lens that to just kind of have this studio rendering of actually the demo car. I'll, I can show you the data set so you get a sense of what's in the lens. So the data set just looks like this. I have like just screenshots of a studio environment of the demo car. And I want to use this because it has like nice context of like how I would want the graphics to be. Um, I like the studio environment, so maybe I want to also bring that out in the renderings. I'll also show you if you want to do studio renderings, how to do that. But as a starting point, I just train the lens to just get better generations. And that's also something if you want to improve the renderings, you can always just kind of add context to what you want from a lens. Uh, so I use the lens, I call it like 0.5. Uh, and now since we have the full model influence, we should use it because there's nothing of the original screenshot from a shading perspective that we want to use. We don't want the gray ground, we don't want gray wheels, we don't want gray anything. We just want the shapes of the original image, so I use model influence at full. And then just want the shape from the screenshot, so I'll go to like 0. Point, maybe 0. 0.9. And now since we're using a screenshot, we should use literal because we want all of those details that are in my Blender model and that I modeled, I want to have them there. Uh, yeah, 0 0.9 and literal. And now also, as you saw, when I opened the image, I already got all of the prompts. There's nothing that I want to change. They're good. We can just leave it at that. And then we generate and let's see if we have to uh, change any of the settings, but first see, let's see where the model is at. So this is the first generation. It already looks kind of clean. Um, I also kind of like this feature that it dreamt from the lens actually, because the lens car has this feature. So it's also interesting to see the influence of the lens. And if, if you have shapes in the lens, how they will also come out in the generation. But like, I like the graphics. So that's exactly how I want them. I also like the back wheels and the tires. So that's all nice too. I'll do another one just to see where we at. This time we got a render in red, which is pretty cool also. Um, if, for for example, you don't want the studio environment that's in kind of inherent to the lens, we can go back and then I'll just add an inspiration image that is somewhere other than the studio to basically get that context from the inspiration image since the lens always kind of wants to go that, uh, to the studio. I'll use this uh, scene kind of as inspiration for the shading and hopefully get some like mountains and kind of the sunset -y, purple sunset -y vibe to the generation. I don't think we have to go quite high, so I'll just use 0 0.3 uh, and just go again with the inspiration image. Okay, here we go. Um, good enough for this. I'll just do a remote inspiration. I'll do a pass, so I'll do a pass on the current generation, just, just kind of refine the things that we have on the current image to make it even more coherent. So I reduce the model influence, maybe to even to 0.7, uh, give some slack on the shape control, so it has a bit of freedom to kind of adjust things. 
overall I like it. So let's generate, generate on this. And bam, uh, good enough for this demo. I'll refine it as well. There's some stuff that I would want to fix in Photoshop, uh, like especially on the rear. Uh, but just for the sake of this, I'll skip that and just do some, just do a overall like nice looking image. Here we go. I'll just download this so we can see it in big. We have this 4K rendered image, and this is how I did those posts on uh, Instagram. And uh, just a bit of Photoshop after, just to fix some other lines. Also, I think already within Optic, you can get some better stuff if you just tweak those settings even more. But for the sake of this demo, try to go a bit quick. Uh, but hopefully, you can get a sense of uh, what you can get, especially with the new changes that you can put model influence all the way to one. You can combine them with lenses that already have a lot of context for what you're trying to generate. And then just doing a pass on the generations to like really make it punchy and really make it uh, even more aesthetic. Uh, you can render a lot of stuff and not just like sketches. You can use those blender screenshots to even render or just get data. Uh, so it's not, you don't, you don't have to be limited by uh, using a sketch. So hopefully you can get a sense of the model upgrade. And that like you can still do sketch style if you want uh, but for example if you want to render blender screenshots it really tries to make them realistic you can also make a sketch blender screenshot but that then that will just depend on you know, the context of like the lenses you use the inspiration image you use or even the prompt you use because now you can manually change it if it's necessary for you hopefully all these changes on the update are helpful and uh, there's more stuff coming Already we have a lot of stuff that we want to add and go enjoy the update and we'll see you on the next video. Ciao.